We're here with uh, Randy Grubb, automotive artist. I uh, spotted this driving down the strip. Um, you can't miss it. It's shiny, it's big, and it's it's just weird looking. So I wanted to get with Randy and see what his uh, what his take on it was. What what did this start out as? Well, it started out as a couple things, Matt. The very nose of it is a Model 3000 white. Uh, there was a real common trash truck in the 50s, and that's the, the doors and the very front cab. The chassis that it's riding on is a 1973 GMC motorhome. Uh, between 73 and 78, GMC made those really iconic motorhomes. Right. It was the urban assault vehicle in stripes. Yes, yes. And uh, basically, it's got a really cool chassis underneath it. The unique thing about the 73 GMC motorhomes is they were front wheel drive. And most motorhomes, when you go up into them, you walk up a flight of stairs to get above the drivetrain. This has a really low chassis, and that was critical to the design with the flying bridge. You had to have a low chassis in order to stack the flying bridge on top because when you're driving it from the roof, your head is at 11 foot 6 inches. Wow. <laughs> which your freeway overpasses that are 13 6, they, they can scare your friends. Yeah, it's yeah. cool. The chassis and everything, was it pretty rough when you started out with? You might have said you used a, a one little Eastwood product might have made, a, made an appearance on the chassis. Yeah, more than one. I've been hot rodding for over 35 years and the Eastwood name uh, I got to tell you, I've been aware of for a long time. I bought my first uh, leading paddles and leading supplies from you guys over 20 years ago. Great. And uh, I still use your products to this day. The rust encapsulator is what we used on the rusty 73 GMC chassis when we got the body off. We had some surface rust and the Eastwood rust encapsulator was really easy to use. It uh, seems like it really works well. Um, so thank you very much Eastwood. Uh, yeah, definitely. We're, yeah. we're glad we can help and hopefully in the future we can help with any projects. I understand you said you've, you've driven this a few times from the roof, is, is that right? Absolutely. If you go on YouTube and type in Deco Liner, there's some great video of us driving around, dicing it through LA traffic at 75 miles an hour wow, from the roof. Wow. So it is a full function vehicle that you can actually drive from either, either place. We drove it a thousand miles from Grants Pass, Oregon to get to the SEMA show, and we're going to be driving a thousand miles home. So yeah, it's a real piece. It actually works. It actually drives. Uh, it's a fun, fun thing. The hours involved in the whole project are somewhere around 5,000 at this point. Wow, wow. So, um, and that's the, over an 18 month period. I started about 18 months ago on this project and a lot of people don't know, uh, I work single-handedly in my backyard shop in Grants Pass, Oregon. Uh, it's just a one-man show, but a lot of people know me as the Blastoline guy and the Blastoline brothers. And uh, I built Jay Leno's tank car, I built the B702, I built Pissed Off Pete, which you might have seen yes. at, uh, a couple years ago here. So yes. uh, I view myself as an automotive artist and I create full-size sculptures that you get to drive. But they're all based on a classic design or a classic design theme. This particular piece, the deco liner, was inspired by the great aluminum trailers from the 1930s that were produced by guys like Curtis Wright and Bolas, which later became Airstream. Those were really stylish, really cool motorhomes. The history of this type of vehicle goes way back, and that's what I was trying to tap into when I designed this piece. Of course, the functional flying bridge is totally unique. Nobody's ever tried right. that one, but that's what makes it a Blastoline vehicle. All right, so now we're on top of this, uh, this beautiful tear-shaped uh, project. Uh, so let, tell me a little bit, how, how high up are we when we're driving on the road? You, like you said, we have a nice commanding view of the road. Yeah, our, my head right now is about 11 foot 6 inches. So your freeway overpasses that are 13 6, that's close enough. And uh, it's pretty exciting up here. You can do everything from starting the vehicle, stopping it, um, you know, the brakes, everything is, yep. all, is all controlled from up here. Yep. Question became the shifter. How do we do a shifter really safely? So I turned to master shift and I use an electronic shifter. So I have a keypad at both locations, down below and up above. Oh, wow. So okay. the electronic shifter handles the shifting safely. It won't go into park or reverse when the vehicle's moving. So uh, the first time you take people in this and you go under an overpass, you're driving, I mean, what, what kind of reaction do you get? Do they all duck or they all hit the ground? Well, it depends on how, how much you play them up. You know, if you start with the, oh my gosh, this one looks low, guys. I don't know if we're going to make it. Then you can really get them going. I mean, you can really get them going. Very cool. Well, thanks again for uh, showing us everything. Uh, we're going to get a couple more shots around, but this is, this is definitely one of the best eye-catching vehicles I've seen here yet. So thanks again, Randy. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me, yep. man.